of the Blue Wave Sports Show. I'm Taylor Smith. And I'm Alan Chicatello. We are here at a packed FAU stadium today to see the FAU Owls take on the University of Miami Hurricanes. FAU is coming off of a devastating overtime season opener loss from Tulsa, falling to the Golden Hurricanes 47 to 44. And Miami is coming off of a dominating performance beating Betham Cookman 45 to zero. This is the second meeting between these two universities. The first time they met was in 2013 in Miami. The Hurricanes dominated the Owls 34 to six. This year's matchup is here in Boca Raton and FAU has made some changes since their last meeting. Yes, Alan. Charlie Partridge is now the head coach for the Owls instead of Carl Pellini who coached the Owls back in 2013. Partridge told his players to enjoy the moment and be excited about this game. But more importantly, to quote, Let's focus on us. These players can't help but be excited. This game hits home for about a dozen players who are from Miami, like running back Greg Howell. Here's what Howell had to say about facing his hometown team. I feel good, man. I feel great. I'm ready for the game. I know everybody from my neighborhood, my community is going to be watching. So it's just one game that's like extra special to me, and I'm just I'm ready for it, ready for whatever. How does it feel to be running against the Miami Big Seven? I feel like, you know, just another team. Just another game? Just another game, man. Step by step. Have faith in my team. Have faith in myself. I'm going to do what I got to do, and we're going to do what we got to do. This is the biggest college football game for the Owls played here at FAU Stadium. The Canes are the first Power 5 conference team that the Owls have ever hosted here at the stadium. One person who envisioned all of this is the man who built both the FAU and Miami football programs, Coach Howard Schnellenberger. Blue Wave's Daphne August talked to him about his vision coming true. This opportunity came and our students first particularly responded. Uh, the alumni responded. The season ticket holders responded. And then the scalpers uh, responded. And they are the ones that picked up the last tickets that came off the press and out of the wallets of guys, you know. And they were sold over and over again so that we had a complete full house uh, for the first time ever, signaling that a 30,000 uh, seat stadium uh, is too small for us. So that eventually we have to have a 40,000 seat stadium. But that's another story. I was, uh, I was, assi I was assigned it as a, uh, a work of art. I would ex uh, have a, uh, a uh, example of what true owl fever can be, and uh, it, it, it puts us puts us into a mode of uh, getting better at it every year, every game because we we've done it once and we'll do it again and we'll learn how to do it better. And when we get the games, the winning games rolling out on a Saturday every Saturday basis. Uh, the human the human imagination uh, can, can barely conceive it. Well, the beautiful thing about it, it was uh, it was my children playing my grandchildren. They're they're kin to each other. It was a, uh, a family feud, a uh, I I ninety five uh, feud. Uh, across town feud, however you want to say, uh, played in uh, our new stadium. Uh, first time for them. Uh, first time we had a uh, ACC school play in our stadium and gave us an opportunity to see uh, what a game, what a, what a, what a game looked like played in, in the, under these conditions. And, uh, and to see the magnificence of the event. There's winners and losers on the field and in fashion. Let's check out the players' game day look. As usual with game days, the FAU players showed off their best, sporting vibrant colors as they walked down the tailgate into FAU Stadium. Starting quarterback Chuck Dice Johnson showed off his style in a light blue sports coat with white pants, a floral tie, and his signature glasses. 
Another player came into the stadium rocking a red two-piece suit, a classy black shirt, and a self-tied bow tie. As for the Owls, FAU showcased some never-before-seen uniforms, which included a multi-decaled helmet featuring a red Owls logo, red state outline with Atlantic in the middle, and red jerseys and pants accompanied with chrome letters. There is no doubt that FAU was the best looking team on the field. This game will be one to always remember here at FAU. Definitely one for the books. This was just the start and will hopefully open doors for the Owls to host other schools like Florida State and the University of Florida at our beautiful stadium. To reminisce and to forever remember this moment, we leave you with Daphne August who has the overall game access. poured into lot 5 to begin the tailgate festivities. I listened to some amazing jams from our radio, played cornhole, tossed the football a little bit, saw my good friend Owsley, chat up a little bit with Howard Schraumberger while fans waited for him to take pictures and sign autographs. Which shirt should I buy? The blue one or the red one? After shopping a little bit, I ran into athletic director Pat Chung. What does this game mean to FAU football program? You know, like I tell everyone, tonight is the best night of college football in all of South Florida this 2015 football season. With the student body, the fans, all of Oak embracing this evening, it's, this, is, this, is, this is our new reality at Florida Atlantic University. This is who we are. It's college football at its best. I want you guys to check out his haircut. Look at it. It is so cool. FAU. So what inspired you to cut your hair like that? It's UM game. I've been looking forward to this for years. I love cheering. I want people to get attention and know that it's a great thing to rep at FAU and I'm owl pride for sure. We may have lost, but we put all that aside because all that matters is our owl pride. Taylor, I think we have waited long enough. It's time to see the action. Here's Andrew Ramey with a recap. When the schedule came out, every FAU player circled this game on their calendar. Every football player's dream to play in front of a sellout crowd on national television. We got it here for you as your Owls take on the Miami Hurricanes. Miami Hurricanes started the game off fast with a 14-3 lead. Jacquez Johnson on the first Owls drive injured himself and was out for the rest of the game. Backup quarterback Jason Driscoll came in and was able to lead the offense on a touchdown drive for his first series. Running back Jay Warren rushed for over 100 yards and a touchdown in the first half to help keep the Owls close with Miami. But in the second half, FAU hurt themselves with a total of three turnovers. And a couple key penalties. Here's Coach Partridge on the turnover. Obviously, it's hard to win a game with that many turnovers. Uh, all the credit in the world goes to Miami. They're a heck of a football team. Lost for Owls as they fall to Miami 44-20. Up next for Owls is University of Buffalo home this Saturday at noon. For the Blue Way Sports Show, I'm Andrew Ring. Thank you guys for watching this special FAU versus Miami game day show. Stay tuned because panel is next where we'll analyze and discuss the game.